Welcome to the course on VLSI Physical Design with Timing Analysis. In this lecture, we will discuss about timing constraint in sequential circuit with clock skew. Uh, the content of this lecture includes what is negative clock skew and how we can uh, do timing analysis using negative clock skew. That uh, maximum timing analysis or setup check with uh, negative clock skew and minimum timing analysis or hold check with negative clock skew. After that, we will discuss some of the examples involving uh, clock skew, positive clock skew and negative clock skew. So, in the last class, we discussed about negative clock skew. In case of negative clock skew, your clock and the data moves uh, in the opposite direction. In this case, if you can see here, your uh, data moves from left to right and your clock clock signal is moving from clock signal is moving from right to left you have two uh, flip flop one is called the launch flip flop this is your launch flip flop and this is your capture flip flop okay so uh, the clock signal arriving to uh, b uh, is faster. So, the T1 uh, will appear uh, age of the T1, the rising age of the T1 will appear faster. A rising age of the clock arriving to uh, the capture flip flop is T1 and uh, rising age of the clock arriving to uh, launch flip flop is T2. So, T1 minus T2 is a negative. So, that is why it is a negative skew. That is why it is called a negative skew. So, now we will discuss uh, maximum uh, timing analysis timing analysis considering negative skew. Okay. So, how my uh, timing will change uh, based on negative skew. So, here uh, I have uh, let us say flip flop One flip flop two. Okay, I have a clock, and clock is moving this is your clock, and your this is your D pin data pin, this is the Q, it is going through a combination logic and this is the D pin, this is a Q. Okay. So, now uh, we will see how my maximum timing analysis will change here. So, my let us say this is your clock 1 and this is your clock 2. Okay. So, if I draw the clock signal, okay, like this, this is let us say clock 1, then the clock 2 will appear early. Okay. So, let us say the my clock 2 will appear early, the time period of the clock will remain the same, the time period of the clock will remain the same. So, now I have clock 1 and clock 2 and this is my skew which is negative, delta is negative, this is my skew. So, here how many edges I have? Let us say this is your my first edge, this is my second edge, this is my third edge, this is my fourth edge. Okay. So, basically if I, if I can see here, okay. so the the first flip flop, this is your uh, flip flop 1, this is a flip flop 2, okay, flip flop 1 will sample at uh, age 1, the flip flop 1, first point is that your flip flop 1 will sample 
at age 1. Second point is that the flip flop 2 will sample or capture or sample or capture is same thing sample at age 4 ok age 4. So, now my time period from here to here is basically t clock ok and this is my delta this is my delta. So, the available time for considering skew is basically from here to here till this point. So, this is t clock minus delta ok. Now, in without skew my equation is that t clock to q uh, I have two cases now case 1 without skew clock skew I have maximum timing uh, constant equation your t clock to q maximum t combinational maximum plus t setup should be less than equals to t clock ok. So, but now case 2 with clock skew with clock skew what will happen my uh, t clock is now t clock minus delta ok. So, t clock to q maximum t combinational maximum plus t setup should be less than equals to t clock minus delta because my uh, total available time to do the operation starts at age 1 at this age and ends at age 4. So, the total available time will be reduced by delta because of the negative skew. So, now my final equation will be now my final equation will be t clock to q maximum plus t combinational maximum plus t setup plus delta should be less than equals to t clock. So, now if you can see here your total time period will increase by delta ok. So, your uh, basically the, your clock period will increase uh, the since uh, delta is added in the left hand side your clock period will increase. So, implies that your f clock or the maximum frequency of operation will decrease will decrease. So, your speed will decrease your speed of maximum speed of operation will decrease speed of operation will decrease. Okay. So, a uh, negative skew will uh, uh, impact your performance, it will is not good for performance speed of uh, your design. So, we have already discussed the max timing analysis, here the main point is that the flip flop 1 will sample at age 1 and flip flop 2 will sample at age 4 and available time for doing the operation is reduced by delta. So, your total uh, time period will be uh, t clock minus delta. So, your left hand side will have more uh, thing to do by more uh, evaluation to do by amount of delta. So, the your clock period will increase since the clock period will, will increase your frequency will decrease. 
so your maximum speed of operation will decrease. So you, the negative skew is not good for speed prospective. Now we will go to the uh, minimum timing analysis. considering negative skew. Okay. So, here uh, what we discussed is uh, you have uh, T com max. Okay. So, this is your T com max and uh, this I have uh, hint added. This is your T com T clock to Q maximum. So, here in the next uh, slide, I have two flip flops. My combinational path is smaller here, your T com min and your clock to Q min. Okay. So, now I have a negative skew, this is your clock, source clock, this is my D, okay. this is your D, this is your Q, this is your uh, D, this is your Q. We will draw the timing diagram first, your clock, this is your clock 1 this is your clock 2, the clock 1 is coming late, so it rises late, like this. Okay. So, this is clock 1, my clock 2, this is your clock 2, clock 2 will come like this, it is it will come early because uh, it is going to the capture flip flop first. Like this. So, if you can see here, this is my delta, this is my delta negative skew, delta is negative. So, here uh, in case of uh, uh, minimum timing analysis or hold check, okay, this is also called the hold check. Okay. So, uh, you we have to consider the one edge, okay, one of the edge. So, here uh, I am considering this is the edge 1 this is H2, this is uh, my H3, this is H4. Okay. In case of if there is no skew is there, your clock 1 and clock 2 will be aligned at t equals to 0. But now I what is happening is that in uh, case of hold check, we are checking the, uh, in this case we are checking, we are checking H A, H, 1 and edge 2 okay such that there should not be any hold violation okay so such that there should not be any hold violation but in case of uh, if if i have no um, uh, skew actually uh, clock uh, basically case 1 without clock skew my hold constraint is basically T hold should be less than equals to T hold should be less than equals to your uh, clock to Q minimum plus T combinational minimum. Okay. But 
in case of uh, uh, case 2 basically with clock skew whole time with skew negative skew actually. So, here uh, negative skew whatever I was talking about negative skew only. So, your T hold will be changed to T hold plus delta. T hold plus delta, delta is negative, okay. So, will be delta, okay. So, here now, so T hold. minus delta. So, this is equals to T clock to Q minimum plus T combinational minimum. So, my hold constraint uh, with negative skew will be T clock to Q minimum plus T combinational minimum plus delta. So, this is my final equation in case of negative clock skew. So, what happens is that I have a term added in the right hand side this delta I have a term uh, added in the right hand side this delta helps to fix my hold violation easily. So, there will be uh, there is less chance or uh, no chance of hold violation if you have a uh, basically negative skew because it is added in the right hand side. So, your uh, basically uh, it is easy to fix your hold violation in case of negative skew. The negative skew reduces the risk of hold violation. So, in case of negative skew you have a impact on, a, on the speed of your design in case uh, of uh, negative skew you have no hold violation. So, this these are the two things because uh, why this uh, T hold minus delta earlier we are checking the hold across this uh, second edge. Now, this will be reduced by delta ok T hold minus delta ok. So, uh, let us take an example uh, how my timing analysis will impact uh, with and without skew. Uh, with one example we will uh, discuss this ok basically example 1 ok. So, uh, we have a uh, circuit given to us ok the, here the left hand side I have a circuit this is the flip flop 1 this is the flip flop 2. this is the flip flop 3. So, the, this is F f 0, F f 1, F f 2. Now, I have a clock, clock is same to all of them. So, the, this is the case for without skew because the uh, clock is arriving to all the flip flop at the same time. So, this is D q, there is a, some combinational logic is there. Then D q, there is some combinational logic is there. Okay. So, now I have uh, uh, some parameters given to me to do uh, use that one is your T setup is uh, 2 nanosecond T fold is uh, 1 nanosecond T clock to Q is uh, 10 nanosecond. Now, I have uh, uh, two combinational this let us say this is COM 1, this is COM 2, I have two delay. So, but it has uh, two paths are there for example, uh, T COM 1 has uh, 5 nanosecond, this is the max delay and uh, this is uh, 2 nanosecond, this is the mean delay. Similarly, I have uh, um, another T 
think is T com 2 which is uh, having 6 nanosecond is your max delay ok equal to 1 nanosecond for mean delay ok. So, now I, I will do the first find the uh, maximum frequency of operation. So, find the maximum frequency of operation for this design. So, since it is a maximum frequency of operation, I will do the max timing analysis. Okay. So, my answer will be like this. Okay. So, I have uh, um, uh, to consider two paths. Okay. Case 1, path between flip flop 0 and flip flop 1. Okay. So, here my uh, T clock, okay. so I have equation T clock should be greater than equals to T clock to Q, always start from uh, rising edge of the clock, okay. T clock to Q max okay. and uh, plus T com 1 because I am considering between flip flop 0 to flip flop 1 max plus T setup of flip flop 2. Okay. So, here one play uh, setup time is given. So, it will be considered for flip flop here in this case of flip flop 1. Okay. So, now if I change to my previous notation, I will just uh, I can make uh, this will be sorry. this is flip flop 1, 2, this is 3. So, this is 1, 2, this is flip flop 2, correct. So, now I have uh, uh, basically uh, clock to Q maximum. Uh, in this case, both clock to Q max and mean is same even, but if it is uh, both the numbers will be given, you have to use the max value. So, here 10 nanosecond plus T com max is uh, 5 nanosecond plus T setup is 2 nanosecond. So, combinedly your T clock in this case is basically in this case this T clock is uh, greater than equals to uh, 17 nanosecond. Okay. Now, case 2 if I consider uh, between uh, flip flop uh, the path between flip flop 2 and flip flop 3. So, now, I'm, now my T clock okay, should be greater than equals to my clock to Q maximum this value is 10 nanosecond plus T com uh, 2 maximum is 6 nanosecond correct. So, this is your T com maximum. become 2 maximum plus T setup of flip flop 3 which is 2 nanosecond. So, it is uh, comes out to be 18 nanosecond T clock should be greater than equals to 18 nanosecond. I have to take uh, basically the worst case uh, time period, the worst case time period is 18 nanosecond okay, which is the max of that. Okay, so, if I can write the maximum frequency of operation. Now, I have a, a T clock should be I should consider the max of both the path. Okay. So, I have let us say this is 1, this is 2 max of T clock 1 comma T clock 2 here it is uh, basically 18, 18 nanosecond. My frequency F clock okay, maximum frequency of operation is uh, basically 1 by T clock which is basically if I found uh, 1 by 18 it comes out to be 1 by 18 nanosecond. Okay. So, it comes out to be 
56 megahertz okay so this is my uh, maximum timing analysis okay and, and this is my maximum frequency of operation for this design so now if i go into uh, fold violation okay if i go to the fold violation now uh, i if i uh, check the minimum timing analysis okay so whether there is a fold violation is there or not i have to do the minimum timing analysis in the minimum timing analysis in the same in the same circuit okay i have two path so uh, a minimum timing analysis a uh, fold check i am doing for the same circuit okay so fold check i am doing for the same circuit so what is happening here is that this uh, t fold okay the case one so case one is basically between your uh, flip flop uh, one and two flip flop one and two okay so in this case your t fold t fold should be less than equals to t clock to q minimum plus t combinational minimum okay so now if you can see uh, uh, fold time if i go to the previous slide uh, t fold is uh, 1 nanosecond so here 1 nanosecond should be uh, less than equals to your uh, t clock to key minimum the t clock to key minimum is uh, 10 nanosecond okay so 10 uh, nanosecond plus the combinational minimum is basically 2 nanosecond 2 nanosecond so here there is no hold violation 1 nanosecond is uh, satisfying 12 nanosecond so no hold violation okay so then then let's say case 2 okay so case 2 is basically flip flop 2 and uh, flip flop 3 okay so you have to consider the path between flip flop 2 and uh, 3 so t hold should be less than equals to t clock to q minimum plus t combinational minimum okay so now if i see here my hold is 1 nanosecond hold value is same for both the path and uh, uh, hold value is same for both the path and the clock to q delay is uh, also uh, same 10 nanosecond plus t com minimum is uh, basically uh, if i go to the uh, it's 1 nanosecond it's 1 nanosecond so now this is basically your uh, 11 nanosecond so uh, it is satisfying the constraint so there is no no hold violation violation in this case okay so here if i assume one thing okay here if i assume one thing if i assume my t clock to q minimum is basically uh, 0 0.5 nanosecond okay and my t com minimum is basically 0 0.2 nanosecond okay so now and uh, my hold t hold is basically t hold is let us say same 1 nanosecond now if i have t hold uh, is a uh, I, I have this equation same equation i am writing to make it familiar uh, familiarize you uh, how this uh, uh, things uh, is working so t com minimum so uh, your hold is 1 nanosecond now this is uh, 0 0.5 nanosecond plus 0 0.2 nanosecond so here this constraint is not satisfied 0 0.7 nanosecond so this constraint is not satisfied so this is not satisfied. so here there is hold violation okay this is an example of how the hold violation will happen so basically we need to uh, check that this is a case for hold violation 
Okay. So, here one more thing you uh, notice that hold violation is does not depend upon your clock speed actually. Okay. If you change the clock speed also, you cannot mitigate or solve the hold violation problem. Only prob way you can solve it by inserting buffer in the combinational path. Okay. Now, we will uh, discuss this uh, uh, example with uh, clock skew. Okay. Same example with clock skew. So, we uh, will discuss this example with clock skew. So, basically I have uh, 3 flip flop. So, this is basically a pipeline design. Three flip flops are there. Okay, flip flop one, flip flop two, and flip flop three. Okay, now I have a combinational delay here. Now I have a combinational delay here. Now the clock is going, but here we have considering positive skew. So your clock and data is moving in the same direction. So this is your D. This is your Q. This is your D, this is your Q, this is your D, this is your Q and your clock is basically like this. So, you, you can have a clock here also, in this path also you can add a buffer okay so this is my design okay so here if you can see uh, here you have uh, some buffer is there so the buffer delay is uh, considered here i can writing the buffer delay buffer delay is 1 nanosecond okay this is uh, 1.5 uh, nanosecond and uh, here it is 2 nanosecond. Okay. So, this is given uh, in the example itself. Now, I will find uh, with uh, the both uh, two cases, one is max frequency of operation, frequency of operation, okay. then the hold check actually, hold check, we are uh, whole check will do and uh, the other parameters whatever we consider is remain the same actually in this case. So, other parameters will remain the same. So, here one uh, reality is that actual circuit we have buffer, but in this case also we have added the buffer. This is we are going closer to our actual implementation in a chip. So, if you have the buffer how my timing will change. So, if we see here I have a case 1. Okay. I have a case one uh, with uh, basically positive skew. So, there are two cases is also there like uh, the previous case between flip flop 1 and flip flop 2. So, I have to write uh, the timing constant equation considering positive skew. So, your T clock okay, uh, plus delta. should be greater than equals to t clock to q okay t clock to q plus t combinational 1 so this is com 1 like the previous example t com 2 t com 1 max plus t setup okay now, I have to uh, find the value of delta in this case. Delta is basically here it is reaching at 1 nanosecond, here it is reaching, reaching as at 1.5 nanoseconds. So, your delta is uh, uh, whatever I uh, defined earlier the capture arrival time, capture clock arrival time minus launch clock arrival time. Here, if you can see 1.5 nanosecond minus 1 nanosecond your delta here it is 0 0.5 nanosecond. 
So, if I substitute the here my previous equation, uh, uh, I have found uh, this equation. So, here it is uh, 10 nanosecond, this is uh, I will see the values 10 nanosecond, 5 nanosecond and 2 nanosecond. Okay, 10 nanosecond, 5 nanosecond and 2 nanosecond. Okay. Now, my delta value is basically uh, 0 0.5 nanosecond. So, now my t clock 1 in this case the t, t clock 1 in this case will be greater than equals to uh, basically 17 minus 0 0.5 which equals to 16.5 nanosecond. So, the t clock 1 implies this t clock 1 is 16.5 nanosecond. Now, the case 2 case 2 basically you have uh, flip flop 2 and 3. So, now I have to find the skew at this point. Skew is, is in this case is basically at this point what is the arrival time versus at this point what is the arrival time difference. So, it is uh, 2 nanosecond it is 2 nanosecond. So, now if I uh, find out the clock in the previous case, the, the clock whatever it, we find, find it out, it is basically 18 nanosecond, earlier it is 18 nanosecond. So, uh, this will be the T clock 2 was find, found to be 18 nanosecond. Now, my delta is 2 nanosecond, my uh, the new T clock skew, this is without without clock skew okay now with clock skew my t clock 2 will be with uh, clock skew my t clock 2 will be 18 nanosecond minus 2 nanosecond it will be 16 nanosecond with clock skew so so here now i have to find out the maximum frequency of operation so this is my T clock 2. Okay. So, now I need to find out maximum frequency for operation. So, I have to uh, find the T clock which is max of both of them. So, max of both of them it is uh, uh, it is T clock 1 comma T clock 2. Okay, it is a uh, max of uh, 16.5 okay. and uh, this is 16 actually nanosecond comma 16 nanosecond. So, it is comes out to be 16.5 nanosecond. So, my um, uh, frequency of operation F clock okay, my F clock will be 1 by 16.5 nanosecond. Okay. So, the maximum frequency is uh, basically 60.61 megahertz, okay. 60.61 megahertz. So, earlier case without clock skew, the value is without skew is basically found to be 55.56 megahertz, okay. So, th this is without skew. But now, with skew, my F clock is changed to 60.61 megahertz. So, with the positive skew, your speed increases. So, the conclusion is that with positive skew, with positive skew, uh, basically your uh, speed of your design increases. Speed of your design speed of operation increases. So, this is the conclusion. Now, we will go to the whole check. So, now we will discuss the uh, if, if I have positive skew, uh, how it will impact my whole violation, whole check. So, if I have a uh, positive skew, uh, then how my whole violation will impact whole check. So, I have two cases 
case 1 ok the case 1 is between uh, flip flop 1 and 2 then uh, if I uh, have uh, between flip flop 1 and 2 then uh, if you can see here you have uh, basically the skew delta at this case uh, found to be delta value is found to be 0 0.5 nanosecond ok. So, if uh, this is the case then my T hold T hold plus delta should be less than equals to T clock to Q plus T combinational minimum both are minimum. So, my T com uh, minimum uh, T clock to Q minimum this is uh, basically if I can say the clock uh, this is 2 nanosecond this is 10 nanosecond ok and your T hold plus delta is basically T hold is uh, 1 nanosecond and uh, this is basically 0 0.5 nanosecond. So, it is 1.5 nanosecond less than equals to 12 nanosecond. So, there is no hold violation. Okay, there is no hold violation. Then case 2, okay, case 2, if I take between flip flop 2 and 3, so uh, what is the skew delta here is 2 nanosecond, okay, here this is the skew. So, this is 2 nanosecond delta in this case is 2 nanosecond. So, now, now I T hold uh, is uh, same and delta is different but T clock to Q uh, as uh, we have taken both the things same but T com 1 here this is T com 2 second path. So, here T hold uh, is basically uh, 1 nanosecond that is no change delta will change by 2 nanosecond and your T clock to Q minimum is basically 10 nanosecond, T combinational minimum it is 1 nanosecond, this is 1 nanosecond. So, now this is 3 nanosecond less than equals to 11 nanosecond. So, this constraint is satisfied or no hold violation no hold violation ok. So, but if I assume if I assume let us say this peak clock to minimum is uh, uh, 0 0.5 nanosecond and this combinational minimum is 0 0.5 nanosecond. Now, and let us say the T hold is uh, basically uh, 1 nanosecond and delta is uh, 0 0.5 nanosecond. So, in this case if I put uh, the same equation again T hold plus delta should be less than equals to T clock to Q minimum plus T combinational 1 minimum ok. Now, if I apply the equation here T hold is what T hold is 1 nanosecond plus delta is 0 0.5 nanosecond should be less than equals to this is 0 0.5 nanosecond this is 0 0.5 nanosecond. So, it comes out to be 1.5 nanosecond less than equals to 1 nanosecond hence this constraint is not met. So, there is hold violation. There is hold violation ok. If your delta is more the hold violation will be severe. So, in order to solve the problem you need to insert buffer in the combinational path. It cannot be solved by changing the clock frequency or frequency of operation of your design. So, hold violation is a severe issue in case of digital design because of the clock skew there might be some of the paths have hold violation which is cannot be estimated during, during the analysis. So, there should be more attention should be paid for doing the fold violation check 
in all the paths in a sequential circuit. So, we discussed about uh, the how to do timing analysis using negative skew. We discussed about uh, also one example how to do timing analysis with and without considering the uh, clock skew. Thank you for your attention.